Good morning, ICC. I'd like to welcome all of you here, as well as those who are joining with us online. My name is Sandra, and I'll be your service leader today. I'd just like to give you a quick rundown of the order of the service. I will open in a word of prayer, and then we will have Simone, who will be reading the psalm today. We'll be having a great testimony, I'm sure, from Solomon, and a really wonderful story by Edith for the Children's Church. And then uh, Pastor Ravi will come and uh, preach the sermon, and after that I'll come back and make some announcements, and we will take up the offerings and tithes for the Lord. And then Ravi will come and we'll finish with the, the benediction. So I'll just like to open in a word of prayer and then Simone will come on. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can come together as a corporate body to praise and worship you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Jesus. And we have some of those uh, you, joining us thank online. You, and thank Heavenly you, Father, Jesus. pray that you'll bless thank each and every one of us as we thank you, receive Jesus. from your word, thank you, Jesus. from the uh, psalm that is mm. to be read, from the um, mm. testimony, and from the uh, story for the children who are with us today. And Heavenly Father, we pray especially that we will um, that you will touch us, our hearts as uh, we have the sermon and that we um, give an, our offering to you as a part of the uh, praise and worship. Heavenly Father, we say this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I'll be reading Psalm 6. O Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger or discipline me in your wrath. Be merciful to me, Lord, for I am faint. O Lord, heal me, for my bones are in agony. My soul is in anguish. How long, O Lord, how long? Turn, O Lord, and deliver me. Save me because of your unfailing love. No one remembers you when he is dead. Who praises you from the grave? I am worn out from groaning all night long. I flood my bed with weeping and drench my couch with tears. My keys grow weak with sorrow. They fail because of all my feet, foes. Away from me, all you, do, who, all you who do evil. For the Lord has heard me weeping. The Lord has heard my cry for mercy. The Lord accepts my prayer. All my enemies will be ashamed and dismayed. They will turn back in sudden disgrace. Yes, it's okay. Thank you. Morning, ICC. It has been my joy to uh, come here. It has been my joy to come here to testify of the Lord's goodness. I am still standing. I'm alive. And um, for me to survive the year 2020, it is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in my eyes. When uh, I was uh, asked to testify of the Lord's goodness, I will never hesitate to say what the Lord is doing in my life and that of my family. Some of you may be aware that I had an accident last year, August 8th precisely, and um, it was a very bad accident, but I am here this morning standing. That is to show that God is faithful and God is good. There is no mountain that he will not climb to set us free. There is no shadow that he cannot light up just to show us the way. And there is no valley that he cannot go into to take us out of our darkness or depression. I just discovered that God is our God and he's still faithful. I was down in my down times. 
I was in a valley. I was almost depressed. But God raised me up. I wouldn't let go because of his mercy. Because of his kindness, God raised me up. I had four surgeries and I came out alive. I had a broken fracture. I had a broken fracture. And my bones are here. I'm standing here today because of God's goodness. I'm alive. God is faithful. I am not the good man. I am not the best. But I saw people in the hospital that got their legs amputated. But my leg is healed. I can walk without any crutches. I can move up and down. That will tell you that God was faithful. God is good. I just want to testify this morning and say, no matter where you are, whether you are in your down times, whether you are in your up times, God will raise you up. I thank you for your prayers. I thank you for your visits. I thank you for everything that you have done. I know it is not by my power, but when I have been to the hospital several times, and I discover that it is not because I am a Christian or because I am so good, but God raised me up. And I pray that God will also raise you up no matter where you are today. God bless you. Thank you very much. Amen. Just today. Sure, but do you know how old the church is? Mm, when I look around, I think almost 10 years. 10 years? No way, it's over 2,000 years old. What? Mm, okay, if I look around this guy over there, yeah, he could, he seems quite old, so that is, that could be possible. This is our pastor. Oh, okay, sorry, sir, sorry. Well, you have heard about Jesus and how he was crucified and buried and then rose again, and after 40 days, he went back to heaven to be with his father. Yeah, I, um, I heard that before. And after that, Jesus' friends was in the house, and they were so sad because Jesus was not among them anymore. But suddenly there came a wind and filled the house. A wind, bubble, that is not possible. The only wind that can be in a house is when you fart, and that's gross. No. Seriously, there was a wind in the house, and the flames came over them, and then they started to speak in different tongues and in different languages. And people outside, they heard the sound of wind, and then they came to see what had happened. And Jesus' friends, they were telling about Jesus in their own languages. And that day, over 3,000 years became to, to believe in Jesus. And that's how this church started for over 2,000 years ago. Wow, bubble, thanks for telling me this. That means that even we cannot see Jesus, we can feel his spirit inside us. Yeah, isn't that cool? What do you think, kids? Isn't that cool? Yeah, it's quite cool. So um, next time you can tell me another Bible story when Bible uh, Bible story when I'm coming back to church one day. Sure, no problem. See you next time.
Amen, amen, amen. Thank you very much, uh, Simone, for reading the scriptures, and thank you so much, uh, Solomon, for such a touching testimony. I think you put all of us to tears, <laughs> um, and we can understand your, your tears as well. And thank you so much, uh, Edith, for sharing that story to the children, and thank you, everybody, for joining us um, this coming, this Sunday. We're so happy to be able to share God's Word with you, those of you who are with us uh, uh, live, and those of you who are joining us online. Uh, this morning, I would like to uh, share with you a very, very uh, special message. This will be a beginning of a series that I really hope and pray you will be able to join us and be able to be touched by these series of messages. The entire series is uh, going to be uh, entitled Introducing God. Introducing God. Um, by the end of the ser series, you will understand why we are saying introducing God, because not as if you don't know Him, but we're going to find out a little bit more about this God that we probably thought we knew who He is and the way He wants us to know Him. I believe with all of my heart that by the end of this series, uh, each of us will have a better grasp of Him. Last uh, Sunday when we had the testimony being made by Ayumi on the screen, she said something that, uh, you know, it strikes a chord in my spirit because that's about what these messages are all going to be about. It's not only about knowing God, but also to make Him known. Can you all say amen to that? Amen. Knowing God and making Him known. Hallelujah. So that's why we want to introduce God so that we understand the God of the Bible as opposed to God of religions or gods that we have been familiar with. And I pray with all of my heart that you'll be blessed in a very special way. So, uh, before we pray, I would like to read the passage uh, of Scripture to you, just three different verses. And uh, if you would be so kind to join me by just standing as we pray, uh, as we read the Word, and then we pray, and then you may be seated. Amen. So, as you're standing, let me just share these passages of Scripture, which I believe is going to be a blessing to you. Starting from the book of Exodus, chapter 3, Verses 13 to 15. Moses said to God, Suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, What is his name? Then what shall I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say. To the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God said to Moses, say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever. The name you shall call me from generation to generation. And one verse from the book of Psalm 103, verse 7. One of my favorite psalms, by the way. There are many of them, but I just love this Psalm 103. In verse 7, it says, He made known His ways to Moses, His deeds to the people of Israel, His ways to Moses, but his deeds to the people of Israel. And last but not least, one last psalm, and that is Psalm 143 and verse 13. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. Can you all say amen to that? His name alone is exalted. His splendor is above the earth and the heavens, in plural. Splendor is above the earth and the heavens. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning again and we ask in the name of Jesus, please speak to our hearts, O God. We know that flesh can only give birth to flesh, but spirit gives birth to spirit. And it's not possible for a human being to inspire another spirit unless your spirit comes in and through 
us, Lord. I beg of you once again, hide me behind the cross. Help me not to speak words of men, but the words of God. Help me, Lord, to be able to communicate to the spirits of us that are here, those watching. I just pray, Lord, that there will be a transformation that can only come about by the working of your spirit, Lord. It cannot be done by the arms of flesh. Lord, I pray and I beg of you, open our eyes that we will see you the way you want to be seen, O oh God. Not the way the world wants us to see you. Not the way we have been taught, even by tradition or culture, but the way you are. The way you introduced yourself to us, O oh God. Help us in the name of Jesus to take away the clouds and all the misunderstandings and all the influences that has been in our life from childhood as we've been taught in the secular organizations as to who you are or what you are. Oh God, in Jesus' name, open our eyes, the eyes of our spirit by the power of your Holy Spirit, oh God, that we can see you the way you want to be seen so that we can worship you the way you are and make you known the way you want to be known. God, I ask in Jesus' name throughout this entire series that you would break bondages in the name of Jesus. You destroy lies of the enemy. You will destroy the works of flesh. We put it on the altar that your holy fire can come and burn so that there will be no strange fire in your house, O oh God. But your name, your real, true name, be made known to us that will bring about transformation in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. So today's message, as I mentioned to you earlier on, it is an introduction to an upcoming series of messages entitled, Introducing God. Introducing God. I know it may sound a little uh, strange to you as like, you know, I came to church because I know God. Why are you trying to introduce me to Him? Just please bear with me as we end the message today and continue with the series so that you and I can understand why we need to come to these very important messages or the series of messages. I've been really praying about this for a long time a long time, concerning some of the things that I've been seeing, not only in, uh, in history, but also in Christianity, especially in the times and ages that we are living in. And I realized that there's so much a misunderstanding about God, or at least the God that we think we know, and from the God of the Bible, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and even Moses, when he was having a conversation with the children of Israel, he said, if they ask me, who is this God? But it's the God of their fathers. And, 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 and even if they, if they ask me, who is it that sent you? Who is, the, who is this God? And God said, this is the way I'm supposed to be known. I've always been known as I am. In fact, in the Hebrew, it can be I am or I, I will be or I'm always. It's, it's, it's the presence of God. Hallelujah. So from the passages that we just read above in a few minutes ago, God is specific about the way he wants to be addressed and known. Amen. God was very specific. He wasn't, you know, uh, kind of just uh, being general, but he was very, very specific. This is how I should be known. Now, it's also important for you and I to understand that in Old Testament uh, times, a name was not just about an identification, but a name was about an identity. It was not just, you know, uh, the name of a person in terms of the identity, but the identity of the person itself was in the name. And that is why we read earlier on where it says, while Israel knew about, they knew the deeds of God, this is what God did. There was this miracle and that miracle and another miracle. Israel knew about that. But Moses knew his ways. Israel knew his deeds. Can you see the difference? I pray to God in the name of Jesus this morning that we will begin to not just know about the things He's done. Today we heard a moving testimony from Solomon about what has happened, how God has healed His, his leg. But it was much more than the deeds. It's about the, the spirit, about the relationship with God that 
moves him to tears and moves us to tears as well. Hallelujah. Amen. Not just the deeds, but the ways. The question I want to ask you this morning, every single person that is here, I've got a question for you. Are you ready? Who is God to you today? Who is God? Who is God? How do, how do you know Him? Is it because what, what has been taught to you by your mom or your dad? Is it what was taught to you in the church or in the Sunday school? Is it what your science teachers told you or your math teacher or your friends? Or you've just been coming on, you know, trying to get close to God and who, who, who really is God to you? Who is He? Who is He? In Psalm 48, 148, we read, God's name is exalted above the heavens and the earth, as it was written. Now, sometimes we think we know somebody. Um, I, will, I want to give you an illustration. I'm going to ask Eve to come uh, and bring the mic here. And um, I'm going to ask Karina. If Karina can come forward. Uh, Karina. Okay, those of you who don't know, this is Karina. Karina, you, you, know, you know Lillian, right? Uh-huh. Oh, great. Could you be so kind to introduce Lillian to these people? I want, you, I want them to see, how, how, you know, hear from you. Can you introduce Lillian to my wife, to these people, the congregation? Yeah. Um, Lillian is a very kind woman. She, <laughs> you see her, I think, every day, or every Sunday. I see her on Wednesday. And, um, yeah, she just made me feel re- welcome right away. Um, she's very thoughtful and sweet, and, uh, but she's also very strong. I feel like when she speaks, especially about God, you can hear the passion and you can hear the devotion she has. <laughs> That's it? Um, I mean, I could keep going <laughs> if you want me to. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much, Karina. Can you give her a hand? <laughs> now... Karina has just introduced Lillian to you, and this is her impression she knows about Lillian. Now, let's just say, you ask me, Ravi, can you introduce Lillian? I can tell you what size she wears, what color she likes, what exact food flavor she wants. I can even tell you Uh, what toothpaste brand she uses. I can tell you uh, what, how much of, what the color of her hair is. (laughs) I mean, also those uh, at this stage you have. I can even tell you that it's even her birthday today. Yeah, also also Edith as well, who was up here. (laughs) They happen to have the same birthday. I can tell you, you, are you getting what I'm saying right now? Karina knows about Lillian because that's why I picked you because it was not too many weeks, probably months. But I've known Lillian for how many years, Lillian? <laughs> 30 over years? 30 over years. I can't remember. I'm sorry. It's been so long that she's become part of my life now. <laughs> you see the difference? Now, I can tell you the same thing. I know the Queen of Denmark. How many of you know the Queen of Denmark? Mm, amazing. Now, how many of you have had the Queen of Denmark pass by in front of your house? You see? It's only me, Lillian, Prince, and Joe. I don't even know if Joe was a... The, she passed by in front of my house. In fact, just drove by. At the same time, uh, I, I, I've seen her like, you know, just like a meter away from each other. I take, took pictures. Of okay, how many of you know there are two princesses? There's Princess Marie the crown prince's uh, wife, and then there's Princess Mary from, from uh, what do you call, no? Oh, Mary, um, okay, Mary. Now, you know what I mean. Anyways, how many of you know the princesses? Okay, good. How many of you know Princess Marie? Okay, how many of you have taken a selfie with Princess Marie? 
Okay, aha, uh -huh, they're one of you, due to the AIDS Foundation, right? <laughs> now, I can say I not only know Princess Marie, she even knows me. In fact, she could point me out from a crowd, came to me, talked to me. I've you know, done fundraising at, a, at an event where she was there, took selfies with her. She even came to me and told me, you are a great speaker. Now, but do I, if I went to the palace today and knocked on the door and said, I've known the queen or I've known Princess Marie, can you please let me in? Do you think they're going to let me in? No, the, probably the security guards may come and give me another room where the walls are very nearby and then they will start interrogating, who are you? <laughs> you see the difference? Now, I think I know, or maybe she knows a little bit about me, but I really don't know her as her husband or a wife or something. This is what I mean. We might, we might think we know God, but there's a massive difference between having this you know, superficial understanding and a real close understanding. That's what I'm trying to ask uh, us to think about today. Now, just two thoughts, and then we will end the message. The first thought I want to share with you is, what are the obstacles or hindrances of knowing God? What are the obstacles? Are there hindrances? What keeps us from knowing God? And the second thought, which I will end with, is that what's the difference between knowing about God and knowing God? What's the difference? Amen? So, there's a passage of Scripture that we will kind of read before we go on to the first thought. In the book of John chapter 14, verses 8 to 9, there's a conversation that goes on between one of the disciples, Philip and Jesus. Now, they've been together a lot. So Philip said, Lord, show us the Father. And that will be enough for us. Show us the Father. That's enough. Thank you very much. Your job well done. We can go on with our business. And Jesus answered, don't you know me, Philip? Even after I have been among you such a long time. Philip. You have hung around with me for so long. I've been with you for so long. Are you serious? You're asking me this question? You don't know me? And then Jesus says, Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Are you following? How can you show, tell us, show us the Father? And so, Philip was a disciple. This is the irony of it. He was with Jesus all the time. He happened to be, you know, among the, the crowds that were seeing the miracles and experiencing Jesus, talking, teaching. And yet he says, you know what, Jesus, I just, 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 just show us, Father, one time, good enough, one time. Jesus said, are you serious? You've been with me? I, I just wondered this morning as we are going through this series, how many of us has been around Christ or around Christianity or around God long enough that we think we know him? And Jesus will say, are you sure? Are you sure? What are the obstacles? What are the obstacles that, that keeps us from knowing God? First of all, the first thing is what we call cultural or religious background. There's a massive difference between the God of the Bible, massive difference, and what we call a cultural God, or a traditional God, or a God that we have been thought about. The God of the Bible and cultural. In Matthew chapter 15 and verse 3, Jesus was saying, Jesus replied, and why do you break the commands of God for the sake of your tradition? There are people, these are Jewish people, they were supposed to be worshipping God, but they were actually breaking the commands of God due to their tradition. The tradition was more important than the word of God. Are you listening? A, a, a habit, a good habit, Maybe even a religious habit, maybe even a cultural habit, but that habit, that, that tradition caused them to break the word of God. It's very important. Tradition can be very, very deep rooted, very deep seated in our hearts and in our minds and our spirits. Sometimes we are tempted to break the word of God because of our culture, because of our nationality, even because of our nation. Because of our tradition, this was the problem that the Jewish people were having. 
And Jesus said, you're breaking the word of God because of your tradition. You love one more than the other. Are you following? Justice in the eyes of God. Cultural and religious backgrounds can be very, very serious. Sometimes we, we I, I, for example, for me, I moved from, uh, from Hinduism, I came to Christ. So in Christ, I've learned about God. But sometimes the, the, the thoughts of, of, of my cultural background, heritage, this is how my, in Hinduism, when something good happens, oh, that means God likes you. Something bad happens, God is now punishing you. And then you're always in this situation trying to make God happy, so, and, and the relationship is gone. It's, it's a very fearful, dreadful relationship, rather than an ongoing development of your, of your life and your, and your character. Are you following me? So I have to keep saying, but, but that, that, that's, that's Hinduism. This is Christ. Well, I have to go past my cultural understanding of God to the biblical God. What is the God of the Bible? Hallelujah. Amen. He's different. Thank God he's different. Amen. Another obstacle that we could face is what we call our own imagination. Sometimes we have gods that is out of our own imagination. We think it's the Bible, but it's really your own imagination. In the book of Jeremiah chapter 9 and verse 14, you probably have it um, in the NIV version here. I'm going to read it from the King James Version. Is it the King James Version? Okay, you have it in the NIV Version. I'll read it in the King James Version. In the NIV it says, Instead, they have followed the stubbornness of their hearts. They have followed the Baals as their ancestors taught them. In the King James, I like this one word because it's an important word. Jeremiah nine fourteen, same scripture. But have walked after the imagination of their own heart. And after Balim, which the fa their fathers taught them. Sometimes we could have gods of our own imagination. It's a God that you make up, that you want this God. You, 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 you call this God Jesus. You call this God God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But it's a God of your own makeup. It's your own character. It's your own imagination. It's not, the, 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 the character does not reveal the God of the Bible. Are you with me? So you've got to ask yourself, is this just a God of my imagination that I'm believing in? Or is it according to what the scripture says? Is it his character? Is it in line with him? Are you following? Now, um, talking about Lillian again. Karina came and introduced uh, uh, Lillian earlier on to you. Now, if you knew Lillian, and if Karina told you that uh, Lillian loves... Uh, to eat a lot of chili, a lot, like super solid. Uh, some of you who, who don't know her will think, okay, I agree. But when you came to me and you said, Ravi, is it true? I said, well, you know, Lillian eats a little chili, but I eat a lot of chili. You see the difference? Are you following? Why? Because I know her. So likewise, your imagination may, may say that my God does this. If I do this, he will do that. And you may have these all kinds of strange imagination. But is it biblical? Is it really God or is it some imagination? Sometimes another obstacle that comes in terms of knowing God is what we call over familiarity. You think you know it all. Been there, done that, got the t-shirt. I know everything. Over familiarity with God. Second Samuel chapter 6, as a man who paid a very heavy price for this over familiarity with God. It says here in the book of Second Samuel chapter 6, verses 6 to 7. When they came to the threshing floor of Nakon, Uzzah, this is the name of the man, reached out and took hold of the ark of God because the oxen stumbled. The Lord's anger burned against Uzzah because of his irreverent act. Therefore God struck him down and he died there beside the ark of God. What happened was the ark had been captured and during our whole process now it's being released and they were all excited. David was leading and they wanted to bring the ark back. They were making a big mistake to begin with. They were not bringing the ark according to the scriptural way of treating it where the Levites were supposed to carry it. They were doing it like the pagan gods where you put it on a cart. God, that wasn't God's instruction. Now, 
On top of that, Uzzah was there. They were all celebrating, and the, ark, the, the oxen stumbled, and the ark was about to fall. Uzzah decided to reach out and touch it. The moment he touched it, God said, you are so irreverent. He was struck down. This is what we call over-familiarity. Uzzah was like, you know, it's just the ark. I've been there. I've been hanging, hanging around this ark for long enough. The presence of God, and he got so familiar with it to the point that he became irreverent. To the, God was having none of it. And the whole celebration came to an end. And they all realized that, what have we done? What have we done? God says that, I still am God Almighty. Just because you hang around me so much, and you're so familiar with me, and my name just comes out of your mouth, doesn't mean that you can disrespect me and treat me with irreverence. Hallelujah. And I think that sometimes the house of God, you've got to be so careful. You know, one of the commandments God says, you shall not take my name in vain. People of God, if you really knew God Almighty of the Bible, you'll shudder before you even utter the name. Even before you utter. The children of Israel, they dare not even mention the name of God because of reverence and respect. He hasn't changed. He's still the same. Why all of a sudden we have this feeling like, I can just go casually and just do what I want? No. It's the same God. Just because we have changed doesn't mean He has changed. Are you listening to me? This is just an introduction. You know, we haven't even gone to the names of God yet. I just want to bring some thoughts to you over familiarity. Another problem sometimes that can be an obstacle to knowing the real God, the God of the Bible, is what we call public or political opinions about God. The public has a narrative as to who God is. Politicians want you to have a, what we would call, user-friendly God, or politically correct God, so it doesn't shuffle their own political systems. That's one politician, one time. He was so good that they even started to say, you are like God. And because he did not listen Look at what God does to him. In the book of Acts chapter 12, 21 to 24. On the appointed day, Herod, wearing his royal robes, sat on his throne and delivered a public address to the people. This was one mighty message he preached. They shouted, This is the voice of a God, not a man. Immediately, because Herod did not give praise to God, an angel of the Lord struck him down. And he was eaten by worms and died. But the word of God continued to spread and flourish. Always fascinated me this passage. Always fascinated. This happened in the Roman era. Angel struck him. And all of a sudden, all they saw was maggots. Are you following? Because sometimes politicians have an opinion of God, or even want to be God. Public has an opinion. Our school system, I mean, it's so sad. Our school systems are not only taking God out of anything that has to do with public education, our school systems are aggressively trying to deny the very existence of God or morals because man has been replaced with God. This is what's going on. I'm, I'm, I'm so concerned for our children. I pray to God that in our children's church, we are able to once again, it used to be a time, you know, once upon a time where you reaffirm the things of God. Now you have to re-educate them. It's when they come back, you have to re-educate them. And they're doing this all in the name of science. They're like, you know, you're stupid if you believe in God. Because God doesn't exist. You have to believe in evolution, a theory they've come up with, which they can't even prove. Are you following me today? And uh, kids says, 
They're confused. They say, oh, why do you go to church? I got to go to church because mom told me to go to church. Yeah, yeah. All my friends know it's stupid, but I just have to do it because, you know, uh, I'm cool because I don't believe. You know, I'm a free thinker. I, I just... Are you listening to me? Oh, God, help our kids. Help our, edu- our education system. Because they, they, they have, there is an agenda. Politicians have an agenda. They want you to, to believe what they want you to. God, will, these are obstacles, and God will deal with them. I pray to God. I pray to God with all of my heart that we will not end up seeing our politicians crawling around like maggots because they go too far. But this is what happened. It's Bible. It's the same God. He hasn't changed. He hasn't changed. Hallelujah. The last but the least, uh, there are many more obstacles. I'm just touching a few because of time. I won't have time to go to. One of them is that being so close, yet so far. Hmm. Being so close, yet so far. Cultural or religious background, our own imagination, over familiarity, public opinion, public or political opinion, being so close, yet so far. The, there's no other better example than Judas Iscariot himself. No other better example. Judas was there. He was part of the twelve. He was with Jesus. He saw the miracles. He saw the raising of the dead. He saw the feeding of the 5,000. He saw Jesus walking on water. He saw it all. He was so close. I've always asked myself, why God? Why? Why did you allow this to happen? It's a lesson for us to understand that you can be so close. And yet... God forbid, so far, so far. Judas had just one agenda. How can I make money out of this man? How can I make money out of this ministry? All he was interested on was to make sure that he kept the money back, helping himself from it from time to time, being very happy about it. Eventually, he wanted to make a quick buck. He realized that, you know what? This man's job doesn't seem to be very successful. It looks like a lot of people are plotting to kill him. He's going to die soon. As a matter of fact, if they're plotting to kill him, why not I just be the one doing it and make some big bucks? 30 pieces of silver. Sounds like a good deal. So close. I wonder, Christians, listen to me carefully. Are we so close? Maybe we know the Lord's Prayer. Maybe we can repeat Psalm 23. We're so close. We're so familiar with certain things. We think that I've been coming to church all my life. Are we so close that we are so far? Could we be there? I'm asking you. I'm not condemning you. I'm asking you to please, I beg of you, check your hearts. I'm speaking to myself. I read the Bible all the time. I'm preparing sermons. Do I know him? Do I know him? When he whispers, am I hearing? Am I so close yet? It's a question we have to ask ourselves, you see. We really need to. And I, and I wonder why we don't hear more messages like this. Rather than just, God's going to bless you. He's going to make you happy. God's going to make you wealthy. He's going to heal your sickness. Look, all those are important. All those are good. But which God are you believing in? Which God? Are you listening? Lord, have mercy. So, we go to the second part. What's the difference between knowing about God and knowing God? Now we're making some progress. Let's go beyond. First of all, listen to me carefully. We can study the scriptures and still miss the essence of it, just like the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They were studying the scriptures very, very intently. They were going to, but there was God. They couldn't couldn't even see it. John 5 39 to 40. Jesus said to them, He said, you study the scriptures diligently. Now, diligently means they do it every day, maybe a couple of times a day, every week. There was a habit of doing it very diligently. Because you think in them you have eternal life. These are the very scriptures that testify about me, Jesus said. Yet, you refuse to come to me to have life. What an irony. They were studying the scriptures so diligently. Maybe they had a schedule, they had a time. The scriptures, and right there, just in front of them was Jesus. And and they missed it. And they missed it. 
Are you with me? It's like sometimes, you know, you, I don't know some of you whether you are used to, maybe most of us are used to using uh, the maps, maybe Apple map or Google map or Waze or whatever maps you use. Sometimes it's so strange, you're so caught up with the map, looking for a place, and some, you know how these maps, sometimes they act out, and then they show you the wrong place. Or they, sometimes it's amazing, you're looking at the map for address number 112, and you're passing 112, still looking at the map, realizing that, and then much later you realize, hey, wait a minute, I already passed it. You're so caught up with this that you forgot. Are you with me? I wonder, I wonder, are we so caught up with the scriptures that we forgot to lift our head and look around and realize God is doing something in our midst, in our time, in our day. Are we in tune with the Spirit or just familiar with the Scriptures? I can quote Scriptures like nobody's business. So what? The devil can do that too. And yet he couldn't recognize that Jesus was right there. Right there. He wanted to even make a deal with the devil, with Jesus. He said, yeah, Jesus, I can give it to you. Jesus said, no way. The devil no scriptures too. So it's not about knowing scriptures. Now, if you happen to just know scriptures, but not God, it leads to what we call legalism and a salvation that is based on works rather than faith. The Bible tells us that our salvation is not by works. It's by, by, it's by grace through faith. Hallelujah. But salvation through works means that I got to do this, 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 this. Why? Because I know the scriptures so well in order to we, if we can just work our ways to salvation, the death of Jesus would have been a waste. There was no way. We had to come to him first by faith, and then we produce works because of faith. But it's not our works that qualifies our faith. Hallelujah. Another uh, challenge could be misunderstanding of God's love. There are people who, because they don't know the God of the Bible, they, they have a misunderstanding of God's love. They believe that God's love means it's a license to sin. Why? Because God is forgiving. Today, after the, the whole thing is over, uh, we're going to play a song, not now, but after the benediction. I'm going to ask you to stay back and listen. This will be the, like the theme song of this entire t uh, teaching. I love the song because of the title. I must admit that it was the title that drew me to the song. The title of the song was Holy love. And I was like, wow, how often do you hear somebody talking about holy love? Holy love. We hear a lot about extravagant love. But what about holy love? And Romans chapter 6 verse 1 talks about this, that sin is not, uh, God's love is not a license to sin. Romans 6 1, it says, what shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? So Paul is saying, look, the grace of God, the love of God is not a license to sin. Now, this doesn't mean that you're not going to fall into sin. In other words, you're going to be out of this world. As long as you live in this body of, of flesh, you're going to fall into sin. There's a massive difference between falling into sin, coming back to God and saying, I'm so sorry, Lord, I, I said the wrong thing, I did the wrong thing, I thought the wrong thing, than to live in sin. There's a massive difference. You understand what I'm saying? To live means I can continue just doing whatever I want because God's going to forgive anyways. No, that's a mis that is one of the things that tells us that you, you really don't know God. You can't misunderstand His love as license to go ahead and just sin and do whatever you want. No, that's not us. The love of God is what convicts us and transforms our life and makes us want to follow His word. And even when we fail, we say like, I don't want to do this, Lord. I don't want to do this. Help me, please. And then he changes us. Hallelujah. Amen. And that's why sometimes you have a lot of doctrinal errors. Doctrinal errors like um, you have hyper faith, for example. Hyper faith where you believe you can just command God to do things on your behalf. We have a relationship with God. We don't command God. Are you with me? We don't command God. And some people say, ah, I can just command God to do Oh, hyper grace. I can just, you know, go ahead and do whatever I want because His grace is good enough. He's forgiven me of sins past, sins present, and even sins future. So I can just do what. 
Where does it say that in the scripture? Are you following me? It's very important to understand that. And in today's world, we, we even have the, 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 the whole doctrinal error with, with, with uh, uh, entertainment or worshiptainment, as we, we call it, where I, I, I want to feel good in praising Him, in worshiping Him. We use all the, the right lingos, the right jargons, but it's all about me. I gotta feel good, it's gotta sound good, it's gotta make me feel good. Where does it say in the scriptures that you gotta feel good when you worship God? Where does it say that? Are you following me? But that's what's being entertained. That's what's being pushed down. Is that the God of the Bible we're talking about? Or is some God of your imagination? The only way to know God is to go beyond understanding His words into experiencing His character based on His name. Can you say amen to that? Hallelujah. We must know the difference between what we call doctrine, dogma, what God says. Dogma is doctrine. This is what God says about Him. And theology. Theology is theos. Means God. Logi, which is man's understanding. Man's understanding of God is different from what God says. Man could differ in their interpretation, but let's go back to what do you say about yourself, God? Don't you want to know God that way? Amen? That's what I want to know. Hallelujah. Also, be wary, please listen to me carefully, be wary of people who claim to have what we call an extraordinary encounter with God. Some people believe that they are specialists, that, you know, yeah, this is God, I am His special representative. Such people go into great details as to what they have seen and heard, and then they can tell you that you want to know God? You've got to go through me. Almost sounds like a, one of the denominations that I know of. You can't go to God. You've got to go through the mother. You, are you listening to me? The Bible tells us very specifically in, in Colossians chapter 2, verse 19 to 18. Listen very carefully. This is Paul. Now, Paul had been up to heaven. He had seen things that he can't even explain. Paul, who wrote a lot of the letters, had refrained from going into details because Paul knows that cult. And Paul says here in, in, second, in Colossians chapter 2, verses 18 to 19, he says, Do not let anyone who delights in false humility and the worship of angels disqualify you. And then Paul describes about them. He says, Such a person, goes, uh, such a person also goes into great detail about what they have seen. They are puffed up with idle notions by their unspiritual mind. They have lost connection with the head from whom the whole body, supported and held together by its ligaments and sinews, grows as God causes it to grow. During the times of Paul, even in the Jewish uh, before Christ you know, came, even in the Jewish religion, there were people who, who, were, who were mystics. They, they were what we call Gnostics. Uh, uh, there's even a whole teaching called Gnosticism. They would teach you the special secrets of God. You've got to go through their little cult to find out who God is. And, and, and they would go into many, many details because they've seen things and heard things. You've got to watch out for people. Uh, especially this day and age, you know, literally, you can go on to the internet, you literally get the good, the bad, and the ugly. And so, what to ask yourself, is this in line with the scriptures? Is it really, does this person have some special connection that without them I can't? Or does God want me to have that relationship with Him personally? Are you listening to me, people? Amen. I think this is a very important message for our time. Last but not least, what are these things that is either knowing God or knowing about Him? Don't just be emotional about your relationship. Have substance. It is okay to have emotions. Don't get me wrong, we are all emotional creatures. When I preach a message, sometimes I get all excited because it's part of my, my, my expression. But it's not just about emotions. It's about substance because faith is substance. And that's why I'll end with this uh, scripture, Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1. It says here, um, in the NIV it says, Now faith is confidence 
in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. In the King James, which is what I've memorized, now faith is the substance. Can everybody say substance? Come on, say substance. Try to put your hand up and do this while you say substance. You know why I ask you to do this? Because substance means something you can touch, feel, tangible. It's, are you with me? It's not just, hmm, spooky. Faith is substance. Are you with me? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I haven't seen it. I, I, I haven't grabbed a hold of it yet. But I know, I know that I know that I know. Hallelujah. Amen. When, when you have faith, you just know. This, this, on Wednesday, we were praying. We were praying for different things. And, and Navid had a private prayer request, and I was praying for him. And, and then after the prayer meeting, he came to me. This was even before the prayer was answered. He came to me and he said, I just know God has answered my prayer. Honestly, I'm happy for him. I was like, yes, hallelujah, and amen. And inside, I was a little bit shaking. I was like, oh God, please, I'm the one who prayed. And then they went back home, and the, was it the day after or something? The day after, Karina had made a group chat, and she sent a quickly message. She said, that prayer you prayed, it was answered. It, it could have taken months. It was answered overnight. And then I was like, oh, thank you, Jesus. You know, when you're praying for people, you're really like, oh, Lord, have mercy. And I said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. And it's, you know it, it could have taken months. It's a private prayer request, but wow. Why? Because he had faith, and he could feel the substance of it. Hallelujah. Faith is substance. It's not just I feel. Some people, today I'm going to pray because I feel so good. Today I'm going to go to church because it's, ah, the sun is shining. Next, next Sunday, oh, my Lord, it's raining. I cannot, you know. Uh, suddenly, Pastor, you have to... Hmm. What, what's your... It's like... You don't brush your teeth because you feel like it. Haven't your mommy and your daddy taught you? You brush your teeth because you have to. So as your spiritual father, I'm telling you, you believe in God because you have to. It doesn't matter what you say. I love that testimony today by Solomon. Honestly, it touched me. He said, I felt pain. Three operations, people around me, their legs are amputated. But God. God, and he stood. Every time I called him, every time I tried to follow up on him, and in fact, to be honest with you, it's him following up. That's a wonderful thing. You know, in a congregation, you have so many people. A lot of people have all kinds of problems. But Solomon was an exception. He was always the one calling. He's always the one reporting. Every time he went to the hospital, came back, he quickly sent a text and keep updating because he's like, you are my spiritual father. I make myself accountable to you. You see the difference? He was, I was so touched. I was so touched. And because of his faith, amen. You see, even his son is petting the daddy now. Say, well done, daddy. <laughs> amen. Hallelujah. So I want to really just uh, challenge you. Faith is substance. So we conclude now so that we can end. Are you ready? Oh, I forgot to take my water. Um, now, listen to this. From the Garden of Eden, from the Garden of Eden, the devil... And the world want us to have a distorted version of the image of God. Are you listening? Way back from the Garden of Eden until today, the devil is trying to distort the image of God. He's trying to give you a mir a, a mir a mir just a miry picture of him, not, not the real picture. He's like he's trying, you know, he's trying to look into the, the, the river and you see a nice reflection and somebody comes dirty the water, it gets all blurred up. That's the kind of image. The devil wants you to have of God, not the real image of God. The battle has been on to create a God after the image of man than to take the place of a man made in the image of God. Hallelujah. That's what's been going on. God says, I made man in my image. And then, then you have this battle where man comes and says, no, let's make God after our image. Can you see the difference? Friends, that's what's been going on all along. And that's why we get upset sometimes when the real God is being shown to us. Our society, 
our society at large, is framing our mindset to think culturally by our world or worldly educational system, to act in compliance by public opinion. This is our educational system. This is public opinion. You've got to comply to these opinions, be it cultural, be it educational, be it climate, whatever the majority wants. This is what you're supposed to subscribe to. You've got to subscribe to what we call a common political and entertainment norm that everybody says, this is norm. This is how we should behave. This is a, and it's inappropriate for you. If you try to do something else, we're going to silence you because we have a standard. There's no God. There's no man or woman. There is no such thing as uh, uh, you know, eating whatever you want to eat. You have to eat the way we say you should. This is how the climate is. We've decided it. Doesn't matter how long the world has existed. And they have a no. You try to go against it. I'm going to cancel. I'm going to silence you. Sounds like persecution to me, actually. In the light of the above, all that we've mentioned. That's why we have what we call spiritual uh, climate that's going on right now. Even Christianity, even Christianity, they have caved in. And they're trying to now present what we call a user-friendly God. Let's have a God that is friendly to the society, to the political opinions. Let's have a God that is friendly, not offensive. Let's have a God that is... Uh, let's take a, 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 a poll to see what the public opinion are. Let's have a God that is friendly to the public opinion. Who cares? Who cares about what he says about himself? Let's make this God user-friendly. And in order to do that, oh, there are some things that are quite offensive. You know what? We, this one is good, this, this is bad. This is good, this is bad. So we try to take away what we don't want to make him, are you following? Hmm. I want to submit to you today that you can alter the word of God all you want, my friends, and take a public census about what the majority wants, but that will never change the nature of God. Amen. You're not going to change him by your public opinion. I've known this God that I'm talking to you about for 38 years. And I'm humbled day after day by the enormity of his wisdom, his justice, his holiness, his righteousness, the tender mercies, the loving kindness. I believe that God is so vast that it's going to take this dust of a creation, this peanut brain of mine is going to take eternity for me to keep on discovering because it's just too vast. It's just too vast. Hallelujah. That's the kind of God we serve. That's the kind of God. That's why the Bible tells us two last verses. Romans 11, 34. I love this. This is one of my favorite verses because it's so humbling. Who has known the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. It's a, it's a mind of humility and servitude. 1 Corinthians 2, 16. For who knows the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? Oh, but we have the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. So this morning, I just want to pray. You will get to know more about him as he introduces himself the way he wants to be known in these next coming weeks. Amen? Not the God of our own imaginations, the God of our culture, the God of our religion. What is, who is the God of the Bible? I, pr I pray to God. The fear of the Lord, the Bible says, is the beginning of all wisdom. Fear of the Lord. But it's only fools who despise knowledge and discipline. So we will, uh, later on as we end the, the service, uh, we will, like I told you, I want us to play a song, and that song, uh, not now, but after the benediction, um, it's written by Andy Park, not Andy Bowler. Where's Andy Bowler, by the way? Oh, wow, Andy Bowler is there. Must be your brother, right, Andy Park? No. <laughs> Anyways, uh, holy love. Like I said, um, the love of God is holy. It's holy. Let's, let's get back to that place of understanding that, you know, when you find Him, you find everything. And the lyrics of the song will be on later on uh, 
but, uh, and, and you'll be able to understand it more. But I just pray, I just pray and I pray and I pray that we will have a better understanding of God in this entire series. And when you come uh, to ICC the next couple of weeks, trust me, this is not uh, a place where I'm going to try to please you or make you happy or just you know, try to have a whoopee time in the Spirit. I want us to come back to, to understand God the way He is introducing Himself in the Scriptures so that we can take whatever we have learned, compare it against Scripture, and I beg of you, if there's anything that you've learned that places itself above the Scripture, put it down, put it away. If there's anything that you've learned that is below the Scriptures, elevate it. Do not let anything come, across, uh, come against the, the Word of God as God wants, wants you to, to know Him, not the way we try and make Him up to be. Amen. Because you know what? When you find Him, you find life. Hallelujah. And that's what I want for you. That's what I want for myself. I want us to know this, the God of the Bible, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that I am the way He wants us to know Him. Hallelujah. Can you say amen to that? Yes. You want to be introduced to God? Do you want to know about Him? Yes. After all this preaching, <laughs> I can't believe this. We might as well just close in prayer and go back right now. Do you want to know about him? Do you want to know about him? Or do you want to know him? Amen. Paul said, Lord, that I might know you. I want to know you. The power of your resurrection and the fellowship of your suffering. Oh, that I might know you more. Deep within my soul that I might know you. Hallelujah. I pray to God. I pray to God. I pray to God. All of us, young and old. Every one of us have the right understanding of God. Can we stand as we pray? Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Heavenly Father, I want to commit each and every one that are here this morning including those watching and following us from another location. Father, there's so many voices that are out there. So many. Too many indeed. Hmm. But I ask in Jesus' name this morning that you'll do what no man can do. Lead this Teaching, Lord, this preaching is not a performance. We're not, oh Lord, we're not here to impress anybody or try and get many likes or try to just do something fanciful. God Almighty, I beg of you that the fear of God will come back into our hearts. The fear of God. Into your church. That your people will not know about you. They'll come up with all kinds of ideas as to how you should be praised and worshipped, or how you should be prayed to. But we will humble ourselves once again to get to know you, Lord, the way you are. You said that you have shown us as men what is good and what you require of us to do just this, to love mercy, to walk in humility, God Almighty, God Almighty, help us to understand that you are still the same God who spoke the word and this world came into existence. You're still the same God who didn't put up with irreverence. When Uzzah just stretched his hand to touch the ark, you try to teach a lesson. And even Judas was so familiar with you. And you made it clear you made it clear, and you even told Philip, Philip, have you known me so long? <gasps> and yet you don't know. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Lord, we, we want to know you, the way you revealed yourself through scriptures, the way you want us to understand you, not by the way we've made you up to be like a little God we can pull out of our pocket and make use of whenever we want to and chuck him back into a corner until we need you. See you next time. Oh, Lord, have mercy. God, have mercy. Please, bring us to a point in our lives 
where you will be the Alpha and the Omega, that you will be known as I am, with the reverence that you are deserving. In us, Lord, in us, do a deeper work in us. I want to pray for myself. I want to pray for this congregation. We don't want to play Christianity. We don't want to play religion. We don't have time for it, Lord. We don't. I beg you, please, bring about a seriousness of God, the things of God, the holiness of God, the righteousness of God, the justice of God, the characters of God, the way you want us to know you, Lord. Do a deeper work in us. Do a deeper. Draw us by your power, by your spirit. Bring us back to repentance. Bring us to an understanding of not just taking you casually, let alone taking your name in vain. Please help us, Lord. Help us to have a proper understanding that this life is so temporal and eternities will last forever. Will last forever. And you, Jesus, are the way, the truth, and the life. Help us to stop playing games with you, Lord. You're not a toy. You're almighty God. Forgive us. Forgive us. Forgive us. Forgive us, Lord. Help us. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Um, yep. Yeah. Uh, Please be seated, and then Sandra will come. After that, I will come back to do the benediction. But after the benediction, I want you just to remain in place. Obviously, we're not able to sing a song which we're not going to, but we're going to just play the song, because I want you to focus on the lyrics which will be stated on it, and then uh, you'll be blessed by it. Amen. Thank you so much. I'll come back in a few minutes. Amen. Sandra. Shall we give the Lord the a clap offering? Yeah, amen. I'm glad we have the children here with us. Thank you, Ravi, for preaching this sermon on uh, who God is. I, it, I hope it's our prayer to get to know God more and more every day, um, to get an, a deeper understanding and to draw close to him. Thank you very much, Ravi. Uh, there'll be more on this topic in the uh, coming weeks. I would just like to uh, ask all of us if we can prepare uh, to worship the Lord with our tithes and offerings. Um, and then um, we don't have an offering bag per se, but uh, we do have three ways of giving. We have the credit card. We also have the mobile pay. We have three mobile pay numbers for tithes and offerings, the missions, and the New Year's pledge. We also have the possibility of doing a bank transfer, if that's easy for you. I will just pray uh, for the tithes and offerings. And then I will go through a few uh, announcements. Um, Heavenly Father, we thank you we can come together to worship you, Heavenly Father. We pray that you will bless each and every one of us as we come to you and worship you with our tithes and offerings, Heavenly Father. That you have provided everything from us, uh, for us on this earth, Heavenly Father, and you have blessed us all greatly. We Pray for those who may be experiencing some uh, financial challenges or issues, Heavenly Father, that you will uh, bless them as they reach out to you, Heavenly Father. And we pray that you will use uh, all these uh, means to, for the extension of your kingdom. And we say this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, thank you. Um, I would just like to make a few announcements. Um, we have, ICC has been greatly blessed by the uh, uh, Ministry of Culture. We have been uh, given some funds for our utility bills, 66,000 kroner. Um, and we'd just like to thank Victoria and Torsten who have been instrumental in filling out, filling out all the forms and doing the application because this really has taken, it takes some time. But I think we should give uh, the Lord a clap offering for that, should we not? <laughs> As mentioned previously, we try to pray as much as possible. There is intercessory prayer before the service upstairs between 9.30 and 10. And uh, just before we have the service, we have uh, prayer here in the main room uh, where we uh, intercede for the different elements of the service. So you're, please, you're 
f welcome to join us uh, in those two uh, prayer um, uh, sessions. And we have something else that's new. We have a new homepage. Should we give a hand? Uh, I think we'd like to thank Ulf because Ulf has been very instrumental in uh, doing the homepage. I'm sure it's taken a lot of his time and efforts. Uh, I've seen the homepage and I'm very impressed. So I do encourage you to visit the homepage. Uh, and you can write any feedbacks if you have any uh, to uh, info at getintouch.dk. We do have our midweek service every Wednesday between 6 and 8. It's a service of thanksgiving, some teaching and prayer and intercession. So please, please join us if you can. You're most welcome. And this Friday, the young adults will be having a virtual dinner. So it's virtual, okay? Don't ask me how they're going to do the virtual. But they, <laughs> but they are, and I think it's possible, especially... Uh, now we're moving more into the digital age. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to meet uh, in person uh, after a few months, once we're starting to come out of the uh, pandemic. But in the meantime, there are some things that will need to be done virtually. And this is one of them. If you're interested in joining, please uh, contact Lovely or Lillian. Actually, Lovely's at the back there. So if you're interested, please see her. It's this Friday. So please don't wait if you're interested in joining. Um, and then I just want to announce about the uh, all-night prayer service. Well, actually, it's not all night. It's just a couple of hours now because uh, of the restrictions. It will be on uh, Friday, uh, the 19th of February. So if you would like to join or if you have any questions, please contact Anayo or uh, the other Lillian who's sitting at the back there. Um, yeah, <laughs> we have a, a number of Lillians in there. And we have our online home groups. Uh, this is whilst we're having the COVID uh, restrictions. However, I would like to say it's still a blessing. Um, I think we've all got used to being online and being in this virtual world. However, we all would like to, or we can't wait to meet up again. Can you not wait to meet up again when it's possible? once we get through this uh, pandemic. Uh, I've been looking, <laughs> when I look at old photographs, you know, um, um, either at church when we get together, we've had our potlucks or um, birthday parties, and see how close people are together. It's almost like they're on top of each other. So I sh I'm going to be very happy. I don't think it's going to happen just yet, uh, but... Um, I'm really happy when we don't have to do so much social distancing and when we can meet up in person. That'd be really great. But in the meantime, we just need to hang in there. Please keep in touch. If you're not part of a home group, please join one. I encourage you. This is where we all pray together. We see uh, prayers being um, answered. Um, so it's a great blessing. So I would just like to close in a very quick word of prayer, and then uh, Pastor Ravi will come and give us the uh, benediction. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we could meet together either online or as a corporate body here in person, Heavenly Father. We pray uh, that the message that uh, we receive today will touch our hearts and give us something to reflect upon in the coming days and the weeks as we hear more about how to get to know you, Heavenly Father, um, and, how to get, and how to draw closer to you. Heavenly Father, pray, we also thank, uh, thank you for uh, Solomon's wonderful life-giving testimony, Heavenly Father. Uh, and we thank you for everyone who has participated in the different aspects of the uh, service. With Edith uh, telling the story with a puppet for the children and S Simone uh, reading the psalm for us, Heavenly Father. We thank you very much, Heavenly Father, for all these giftings, and we look forward to meeting up again, and we ask that you'll bless each and every one of us. Amen.
Amen. Thank you, Sandra. And uh, we're just going to uh, sh sh close with the benediction. But prior, just before I do that, I want to make two extra announcements which are not mentioned. One of it is that this entire uh, recording crew, all, all of you who are on duty who are not here today, the streaming crew, the PowerPoint crew, as well as the sound crew, next Sunday, right after the service is closed, around about this time, we're going to have one hour workshop where we're going to do a bit of fine tuning because many of us are new and, and all of these are integrated uh, ministries. And so that's necessary for us to just do some very practical, um, f uh, min uh, what we call um, training. Now, the workshop will only take for an hour, uh, take place for one hour and that's it because uh, we, we don't want to be here any longer than that. And we know that you're going to be so hungry uh, after that workshop and you need to rush off. We have ordered uh, very special, beautiful sandwiches for you to take home with you so that on the bus or train or wherever you are, you can just have a quick bite. Uh, and so you, you're going to have some uh, drink and a sandwich to go home with. So therefore, just bear with us as we do that next Sunday. Amen. And of course, for those of you who are jealous that you're not going to get a sandwich next week, um, I just want you to know that Lillian had actually today prepared a wonderful banana cake for every single one of you. They are individually packed and they are left on a tray right behind where Lillian K is in front of... Uh, who is the one behind there? Um, Christy, Chrissy? Christy? Christy, yes, Christy, is it Christy? Ah, oh, Christy, sorry. Christy, where Christy is seated right in front of her, there's a tray, so before you leave, that's after the song and after the benediction, uh, before you leave, just take, please take only one, okay? Because we want everybody to have one. So take one, don't take for uncle and auntie and grandma and grandpa, don't send it to Wagadugu, just, just take one, okay? <laughs> and, and then, uh, so that you can have it, so everybody can have one. Um, in the meantime, we want to uh, give you the benediction, and also we want to um, ask you to listen, sit back. Uh, we're going to play this song, and once the song is over, uh, then you will be able to just uh, leave with uh, some sweets in your hands. Amen? Super. We're just going to uh, pray. Um, not yet. We're going to pray. Yeah. Okay, thank you. We're going to pray. <laughs> Let's stand. Yeah. Amen. The Lord bless you, and the Lord keep you, and the Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance and give you peace. Amen, amen, and amen. Shalom, shalom, and shalom. Please be seated, watch the song, and then after that, you may count yourself dismissed as soon as the song is over. Thank you. Waters cannot quench your love Rivers cannot overwhelm it Oceans of fear Cannot conceal Your love for me Many waters cannot quench your love Rivers cannot overwhelm it Oceans of fear cannot conceal your love for me. Your love for me.
many sorrows cannot quench your love Darkness cannot overwhelm it And I will not fear Because your love is here To comfort me Many sorrows cannot quench your love Darkness cannot overwhelm it I will not fear Your love is here to comfort me You comfort me Yes, you do, Lord Oh, mm-hmm. 